everybody and welcome back to the Moshiks Mainframe channel. This is Moshiks. Lately I was chatting on our Discord mainframe channel where we have thousands of uh, mainframe enthusiasts about, um, about uh, uh, tools to do mainframes jobs outside of the mainframe such as on uh, Linux or Mac OS or on Windows. And I've shown in this channel already a couple of videos of some of the tools that exist, for instance, even on MS-DOS or just uh, some of the assemblers that exist for in Python for any platform that can run uh, Python out there. And I was chatting with uh, Brian Tiffin. Now, Brian Tiffin is the uh, maintainer of GNU COBOL, which is a COBOL compiler for the GNU platform. So if you write uh, COBOL, that's compatible with GNU COBOL, it will then uh, compile through C into uh, into object code that you can run on your Windows or Linux or Mac OS platform, etc. And uh, and the reason I was chatting with him is because I saw this program here. So the GNU COBOL has a bunch of contributions such as vSAM and other uh, capabilities. And then I spotted this GC sword and I looked into it and discussed with him and I found out that there is quite a capable sort program for uh, for new COBOL written by this person. Let's see if we can find it here. So it's uh, maintained by Cedric Isali and Sauro Mena. And um, it's, it's a sort program that is uh, meant to be compatible with microfocus uh, sort. Now, if you know on the mainframe, obviously sorting is a hugely important step on any kind of processing done on the mainframe. Uh, if you remember, the mainframe processes large amounts of records, millions, hundreds of millions, billions of records. And when you manipulate those records, sorting or joining or merging uh, sooner or later will come up in the in the workflow. And uh, and so that's why IBM developed uh, their famous DF sort, which is a very capable and uh, very performant uh, sort platform for the for the mainframe. And, uh, and of course, a bunch of other companies came up, such as, uh, as we mentioned, Microfocus. They developed their own sort utility called MF sort, uh, which is to some extent compatible with the syntax of uh, DF sort from IBM. And then, of course, there's a very famous sync sort, which is a sort uh, software uh, that is now owned by a company called Precisely. It is here on the website somewhere, but it's so well hidden. I couldn't find sync sort anymore. I don't know what's the point of having a website if uh, people cannot find the software that they're be that is being sold by them. But anyway, so it's here somewhere, sync sort and a bunch of others. There's also uh, some specialized uh, sorting platforms, etc. Now, um, new sort, I didn't know it until a few weeks ago, has also its own sort program. And in this video, we're gonna uh, obtain it from uh, SourceForge. If you remember SourceForge, uh, new COBOL is maintained here. And, um, and so we switch to the terminal and we go and play with it there. But let's first switch to the commercials. This is the best thing that's happened to typing since electricity. The IBM Selectric Typewriter. Instead of type bars, there's an ingenious printing element that dances across the paper at incredible speed, faster even than the eye can see. Now watch in slow motion as it turns, tilts, and prints. This tiny printing element is also interchangeable. Simply remove one type style, choose another from several distinctive typefaces, and click it into place. Takes only five seconds, and you're ready to start typing again. Someday all typewriters will work like the IBM Selectric. But why wait? So I have uh, here the GNU COBOL contributor source tree and and I think it's in trunk and in tools and here it is so uh, GC sort 
And if we look at it for a, quite, for a second, you see there's a whole bunch of other contributions. Um, so uh, we go to sort, and then uh, here is the sort program. Now, sorting is not an easy thing. Um, uh, first of all, uh, most people who think about sorting think of their computer science uh, classes where you where we had to learn which sort algorithms are best suited for which kind of purpose. There's no clear winner. There's many different sorting algorithms depending also on what kind of data. But um, but the sorting algorithm is, is, is one part of writing a sort uh, software, but there's many, many more things that you need to pay attention to. For instance, uh, the ASCII uh, table of character and numbers is different than the EBCDIC. So if you have data in ASCII, certain things will be sorted first than in EBS and EBCDIC and vice versa. So there's, uh, you can't just upload ASCII data, convert it to EBCDIC and it will be sorted exactly the same. Um, uh, there's, there's many things to, uh, to think of. And of course, um, there's not only sort, but there's also merge. There's also, there's also join. There's many different things that are a good sort platform needs to be able to do. So if you look at GC sort, let's see, we see that, uh, uh, that uh, there's quite a bit of, uh, there's quite a bit of, uh, of code to write here. Uh, it's not easy to write a good uh, sort platform or uh, suite. And they've done it here in C, and let's see how big this whole thing is. If we say, um, so 25,000 lines without the, uh, without the definition files. So we can also do that. And another um, almost 3,000 lines. So it's, it's quite extensive. There's a lot of work to do. So if we want to compile this, it compiles very cleanly on Linux and to Mac OS. So, make and that's it and now you can just uh, copy gc sort in my new COBOL directory and now we go there and uh, here it is now this of course works in conjunction with new COBOL and um, and it has a very extensive help file which we're going to look at first so this is for gc sort version 1.3.3 and it works on windows works on linux and uh, the syntax is to some extent compatible with ipm's df sort it's more compatible with uh, microfocus uh, uh, sort mf sort and here right off the bat you can tell that it's ascii data or epsidic data and then the main operations you can perform is sort, merge, uh, copy, and join, I think. Uh, you tell it what input file to use. So declare the input file, and then the resulting output file, and then some additional operations you can uh, do, like you can sum fields, you can include some uh, other records, you can omit certain records, uh, in rec, out rec, that's a typical DF sort syntax etc so and then you also want to tell it what the um, what fields you want to search on the length of the field uh, what kind of format is it is it number is it um, is it a decimal number is it x is a character the order is it ascending or descending and uh, some of the other options then of course you also need to tell it something about the record organization is it fixed or is it variable um etc etc and then it will do its job you can also split records into several files if, uh, if if this is something you need to do, which happens actually quite often on the mainframe in mainframe operations. And uh, you can work with line sequential, sequential fixed index, which is ISAM, relative fixed or variable, which is like um, VSAM. Uh, you can specify a primary key, alternate key. As you can see, the field types are also quite extensive. It can be binary unsigned, binary signed floating point, character, packed, zoned, which is, of course, everybody who's been, who's been watching videos on this channel knows that we have packed data, uh, zoned data on the mainframe. So um, as you can see, uh, this follows closely the mainframe architecture. 
uh, and then in the end then you uh, get uh, your uh, your output data uh, the invocation um, we'll look at it in a second but let's first look at some test data i have two sets of test data sorted data which we, where we have a record number a first name a last name a phone number and maybe uh, a second phone number and then we want to sort by those uh, and uh, and in the syntax you always specify where is the the data you want to sort on on what column does it start so you can see here uh, column 37 for instance and then um, the length will be 10 in this case because it ends at column um, 45 or we can go back and say we're going to sort it by I don't know, last name, which will be 21 up to column uh, 35, I guess. So let's try this out. And it's always useful to look at the data. So let's do sort data, just a few records. And then we can, um, here's the syntax. So we say GC sort, we want to, we know it's ASCII data. We want to do a sort operation, not merge or join. And we specify the fields. So let's say we go field, um, I think we said uh, 21 or was it 25? Uh, I think it was actually 21. Find out with a length of 12. Then we say it's character format and descending and then sort data. And we tell that the record organization is fixed, not variable. It's 61 bytes long organization. LS is sequential, like a, a sequential file, and then sort out is the resulting file. And of course, it's going to be also fixed, 61, same length, and also partition. So if we run this, you can see that uh, it's version 1.306, which is kind of weird because, as you can see here, GC sort mentions here 1306, but if you look at the health, uh, it says GC sort one three dot three, so I'm not quite sure what's going on here with the versions. Also, um, um, it prints out the numbers of records that was read in one thousand, and output one thousand, obviously, and then uh, it was so fast that it didn't register within the milliseconds. So let's look at sort out, and you can see that we sorted out by the, the last name and. Aaron, Aaron, of course, is <coughs> excuse me, quite on top. We can also sort by uh, the record number. Then we should have one. So let's do this. Uh, oops. I'm using BIM commands here. Okay, so one with a length of, let's say, four. And then we look at the data again. And of course, we have it now sorted out by record one. And here is what I meant. So uh, if you just tell it it's character data, one is not followed by two, it's followed by 10, right? So we would have to tell it now that it's, um, that it's uh, uh, numbers, not characters. And if you look, if you remember what we saw here in the, in the help file, it tells us here what sort data it has and here it is so we have binary unsigned binary signed so we would you we would probably have to use um, bi for binary unsigned let's try this bi and ascending and if you do this right uh nope we haven't done this right hmm. one to four let's look at the help again um, Binary signed. So, oh, numeric sign leading sign separate. 
There's no sign. Okay, CSL. Let's try CSL. Let's see what the result is. Oops. Nope. Something is wrong. Um, oh, I didn't tell it CSN. I did. Oh, because I overrode it, maybe. Yeah, now it's correct. So this is now, um, but of, as you can see down here, it's wrong again. Um, not sure how to get it to read the numbers correctly. So now I just did it here on this, on this column here, but not on the second. Let's see what we need to do here. Hmm. It's not packed. It's not zoned. Um, not quite sure really how to read this in this number. Format length. So binary. It's not binary signed. It's not floating point. Um, we would have to try. Let's try floating point. But I don't think it would be happy. No, it didn't do its right. So this is something I would have to refer back to. We'll just look at the source code to see how to get this data done. Um, but let's, so I, in the meantime, let's look at some larger data. Uh, I have here a larger data set, which is much larger. Uh, this has, I think, uh, one point yeah, I think it has one point. Two million rows, I think. Yeah, 1.2 million rows. And so if you want to do it now, um, let's do first head test data. So we have something here. So let's say we want to sort on this column. That's one, two, three. that's eight. So We do one with a length of eight. We say it's character descending. So here at the top, we have 119.3f, and we have test data. And it should give test out. Oh, and here now it says, yeah. So now it says 1.25 million records and it took a second. So it's quite fast. Now, obviously that's because my machine is very fast. As you can see here, I have, I don't know what, um, 16 processors, 189 gigabytes, but it's a virtual machine. It's not a physical machine. So let's look at, or uh, let's just head test out. And you can see, of course, it starts with FFFF because that's uh, descending. If you wanted to do it on this one, then we'll do eight, nine, 10 with a length of four. Um, let's say we have 10 with a length of four. And we do ascending. And of course, it starts with zero, 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 zero. So the character, I think, it figured out uh, where we struggle. Where I struggle is uh, still with the with the integer numbers. Not quite sure how to make it understand that it's an integer. But of course, it's an integer. But it's it's not aligned on the right. So maybe that's what throwing it off. Packed is not correct zoned i really don't know what to tell it clo numeric sign leading numeric sign separate numeric sign trading separate uh, we can do pdozd
but I don't understand how this could work. Yeah, this obviously didn't work either. Um, and we can try ZD. I probably have to contact the, uh, the maintainer of sort to understand how to sort on the integer. And that also didn't work. So um, it just goes again as if it was a character. Uh, but you can see the uh, difficulties in dealing in, dealing with uh, professional sorting software. There's a million things to consider. Now, in this directory, you also have a bunch of other interesting uh, things. Um, I have screen cob, which uh, is a very simple uh, COBOL program for GNU COBOL, which uh, defines some working storage here, company name, last address, etc. And then it says, um, we have a blank to screen. And we can actually work with callers here. Here's the screen section, so it knows about the screen section. And then um, you define some uh, a data structure. And then in the procedure division, uh, you say display and then accept the data. So this is actually, as you can see here, clear screen, input screen. It's very, very similar to Kix. So you display a map and then read in all the input from the user. Um, and you compile it with COPC screen cub, and then we can execute it. And yeah, and this is a very typical kicks map there. That's how it looks. Of course, uh, new Cobol also uh, has uh, ISAM capability. So I found the program here, which does a lot of ISAM processing, index sequential, and it even has VSAM um, capability. So the GNU COBOL compiler suite with all the tools is actually quite extensive. And if all you want to do is just some COBOL programming to learn it or just for fun, for recreational purposes, um, you don't even need to bring up a whole mainframe environment such as MVS 3.8 or anything like that. Um, you can just do it on your Mac OS or, or Linux machine. It's much more interactive and uh, probably better editing tools as well. So um, this is uh, some of the stuff I wanted to show you. Let's see what I, oh, uh, this was um, index that, this was a binary file. But anyway, so there's a lot of things we can do here. There's also, Eliza played with this thing here. Uh, Arnold Trembley has an Eliza program. Um, yeah. So do you have any psychological problems? Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're being a bit negative. So as you can see, everything is possible in COBOL, but uh, it's a very capable uh, COBOL compiler. And uh, if all you want to do is play with COBOL, I advise you to look into GNU COBOL. Brian Tiffin is on our Discord channel. Uh, and I'll put the link to our Discord in the description below this video. He's very helpful, very professional person, very passionate about COBOL and about GNU COBOL. So have a, have a look at it, play with it a little bit. I'm sure you'll find lots of uh, surprises on how advanced and how capable it is. And, uh, and for the rest, I'll have a description to the syntax for the invocation. And uh, um, uh, I'll put in the description below this video so you can copy it and play with it because it's not that easy to figure it out. I have to go and ask Brian. Um, this invocation here is just a bit convoluted. You can also put it in, into a file, by the way. Um, you can put it into a sysin file, such as this one, and then just read it from there. But uh, once you figure out the uh, the uh, syntax of the invocation, then uh, you, it's a lot of fun to play with it. And there is uh, test data generators out there on the web. So you can generate 1 million, 10 million, 100 million rows of uh, test data with credit cards, with addresses, 
with uh, umlauts without so uh, a lot of fun uh, can be had with playing with uh, with new cobol and the contributions or tool chain for it anyway i hope you enjoyed watching this video please subscribe and see you soon again goodbye